Good afternoon to everyone. This is I'm live here from British Columbia. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I'm just going to have a quick check because it's a live broadcast. I just have to make sure that um, the reception's okay. So I'm just. Oops, we got a bit of an echo. I think we have an echo. One second. Hi RJ, let me just know if you if you have an echo at the moment. Is it good? Because I apologize. I'm not sure if there is an echo at the moment. Um, if there is, I need to just look at the system. Thank you so much, RJ, for the generous five dollars. What a nice start. So just um, give me some feedback. Sounds fine. Thank you. Thank you. That's my IT person who says no echo. Good. That's very good because it's very difficult to get rid of echo. So I apologize sometimes. Great. It's all fine. I see you. Babs, Birds, Amanda. I see all my old friends. <laughs> my new friends. Mark is there. No, no echo. That is superb. Very good. So let me tell you what I've got in store to you for uh, today. Hopefully this stream will be very stable thanks to my good friend Mark Horner who always comes up with great, great advice and something else. So I'll quickly tell you the two things I've learned. The one thing was uh, to get a, get a proper Ethernet cable instead of running wireless, which hopefully will um, alleviate the, the um, interruptions I've had before because the wireless is not controllable. So let's see how this uh, half hour to one hour goes. And the other one is I've put a high priority on Wirecast, which is my, um, my operating system here. It's, it's the software that I'm using so that it cannot be overrun by others. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back, Kirsty. Hi, Jackie. Good to see Good to see you. And it's very exciting. Exactly a week ago, Monday, the, the one of the biggest things in nature happened. It was an eclipse. It was a total eclipse. We have haven't had such an incident for a long time in the United States. Some of you may indeed remember it. Hi, Klingon. I'm just saying hello to everyone because it's wonderful to see you all and thank you for, for participating. This I actually went with a friend to um, Glen Rock, Wyoming. It's when so I landed in Denver and it's about a, a, a four hour car trip. Um, somewhere to the north, uh, you drive northeast, I think. Northeast is the exact. And you come to a place called Glen Rock, which is in the middle of nowhere. It's near Casper. Those of you who know Casper, Wyoming, uh, will be... Uh, uh, so So the total eclipse went right through it. What's, ex <clears throat> what's exciting? I don't know. If there's anybody here who has seen the total eclipse, say, yes, I have. I have. So then I know. Then I know. Barbara from Arizona, glad to see you. That's great. Very nice. So just give a, a shout if any of you have been in the total only chat working for you. I'm sorry to hear that because the sound seems to be fine. The feedback I'm getting for everyone, Amanda, try and re reset, um, you know, jump in and out. Sometimes there are problems because I think we're coming across very well. Okay. Yes. Yes. RJ, it seems RJ has seen the total eclipse, if I understand correctly, because we have a lag here. So if you if you have seen the total eclipse, it's wonderful. Jump in with comments. Okay, so uh, it's it's great. Uh, total eclipse was a fantastic experience in in Donnelly. Is that how you pronounce it? I hope I pronounce it correct. D Donnelly in Idaho. Yes, it went after us. It went to Idaho. So ain't that America? You've seen it. Ain't that America? It is. Yes, it's been through Idaho. Isn't that incredible? Your video and sound is great. I finally fixed it. I'm so glad to hear that. Sound is good. Uh, you've seen it, but not total. Yes, in Southeast Asia. So that has been some... RJ, so that was before when you saw it in Southeast Asia. So you know what we're talking about. It's something great. So there, one or two of you have seen it before. Uh, I think one person has seen it in Idaho. So you know what I'm talking about. And let's jump in. Let me jump into the excitement, what this is all about. Okay. So I went there with a lot of equipment. Uh, it was hot. It was very, very hot. We arrived actually um on on friday already before the eclipse because it takes a lot of time um as you know i'm a serious photographer very little practice with solar eclipses a lot of a lot of practice with milky way and so on but the sun is a very special star it's a very difficult one indeed it is always like that at night 
You had 80% in deck uh, in, in oh, so how do you pronounce I hope I'm pronouncing the names correctly. Decalb, Decal, Illinois. That's right. So 87%, that's similar to what we had in Vancouver. And I think my friend Mark Horner had something similar near Seattle in Snohomish. So those are the, the typical totalities. And it, the temperature drop is quite good. But I wanted to be right in the zone of totality because I'm sorry to say to those of you, but totality is something completely different. It is, it is this last curve. And just to give you the experience of what it is like, I'm going to play a one minute video. So don't look too much at me running around like a henless, uh, like a, ch um, a chicken or, or a hen without a head, because uh, there was a lot of excitement. It's more about the sound experience. So I'm going to get right to it. In the west, you can see how dark it is. To... Oh wow! It's like a big dark cloud coming out. Ooh, coming. Hurry up. Oh, it's, it's, it's going. It's going. Whoa! Woo! Oh my goodness! Wow. Look how dark it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there she goes! Oh, oh, wow. oh, look at this. <laughs> oh! Wow! Oh! 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 Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. I switched my sound back on. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, got it. Got it. I switched my sound back on. Thank you for the for the feedback. I got it, RJ. The sound is back now. I purposely switched off the sound and um, I haven't been broadcasting for a while, so I'm a little bit rusty. Yes, yes, the sound is back. The sound is back. Okay. I know, I know, but it will be back. It's okay now. I apologize. I switched my microphone off purposely. I muted it and I forgot it. Okay, very nice. But what I wanted to say is, is just, yes, it's back. Just this experience of totality. It's like someone switches the light off. It's an incredible experience, you know. Unplug headphones. Yes, 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 exactly. Exactly. It's so many things. We're back now. Yes, it's all fine and it's going very well. But this is the picture uh, that I'm quite proud of. And that is... That is a composite. I'm going to explain to you a little bit of, of the technique I used and so on to, to get this type of um, uh, uh, results. But what I did want to show you, love the photo. Well, this was an ultimate experience. You have to imagine my friend and I, we traveled very simple. We had this camper van, um, which I don't think I have a picture of at the moment here. But there was no air condition, nothing. It was very hot. And especially on the Sunday, it was very hot. And then these wonderful people across, they saw me there and uh, they felt sorry for me and they waved me, uh, waved over and they said, well, look, we're going to build this awning for you and and we're going to make it nice and shady and my goodness. And they came with ice cream, they came with margaritas, whatever, okay? So 
I'm actually amazed I didn't miss the uh, eclipse because I had such an incredible, I was so, they were so hospitable, everyone, isn't it? Yes, Debbie, wonderful to see you too. And we will also get back into the hawk, wildlife and so on. This time I'm going to specifically just talk about this incredible experience, okay? So I was really spoiled there. They, um... I, I had everything I wanted and the camping place was crowded. It was a place, it was a place that usually has, uh, caters maybe 40, 50, um, you know, 50 caravans or so. Okay. Hello from wet Miami. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes. And there I was, I got ice cream and everything. And they quickly noticed that I have a very sweet tooth. So I was very, very well looked after. Okay. I was very well looked after. I cannot complain. <laughs> so I, I have to say that. And there you can see the instrumentation I had. I had the solar scope out. I had a special pinhole camera. I'll talk a little about that. And then I had my, my two to 500 millimeter all looking at the sun. Took a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of practice to see what type of settings we would use. A lot of arguments with my friend, uh, photographer Matt, of, uh, I mean, w uh, good discussions, but we really uh, discussed for a long time what settings, and we finally decided to take two different settings, and both were correct, by the way. And that's that's the good news, just in case we would be off, because totality was, in our case, 140 seconds, okay? Yes, the hurricane is building off. I heard that. Uh, there was been some coverage on Periscope on it, I think they had over a million views on it. It was quite, yes, prayers to everyone in Texas. I completely agree. Um, it's it's terrible. And, um, well, you may not want to hear this, but I, I strongly believe that the impacts of global warming are going to going to hit us very severely, okay? That's, uh, this, this is, I, th I think there is unfortunately more and more, I wish it was something easier to say, but there's more substantial evidence in this, in this sense. Anyway, so... This was the total equipment that we both had. Really missed my broadcast. Well, I'm back. I'm back and I'm going to be back with much more. Okay, much, much more. So this is the equipment we had. And you can see this beautiful uh, large bus. That wasn't ours. That that was the neighbors who were next to us. They had this wonderful... Uh, <laughs> they had this wonderful... Uh, uh, awning that I was able to use. So we put up all our equipment. You can see lots and lots and lots of equipment there, right? And um, so let me let me talk a little bit about the pictures now, okay? So I messed up. I did mess up a bit, okay? And it's, it's, it's normal to mess up because things can go wrong. Here are my pictures, okay? So you can see that. And it looks like something really strange. I mean, look, look at these pictures here. Um, and it's not as bad as it looks, okay? So... Oh, no, wait, this, you cannot see this at the moment. Hang on. It's supposed to be on this screen. One second. There you go. You should be, yes, now, now you should be able to see it. So what do you see here? You see some strange types of internal reflections. And the, the reason for the internal reflections was because I don't think I had, um, you know, I had the, um, the opening completely covered. I know when it gets sweets too, says Deborah. So does my fiance <laughs> grow. Yes, the capture of darkness was really more than we had in Spokane. Yes, yes, it was. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the darkness is quite something. So I did, I did mess up a bit. You can see there were internal reflections. But it wasn't as bad as it seems because the partial part, I can easily isolate the sun here. But you can see, I'm just going to scroll through them quickly. You can see what's happening here. They get bright and lighter and lighter. And you think, what's Christian doing here? This is strange, okay? Why is he, why is he doing this? Why is he, that exposure seems fine. And then he suddenly seems to be overexposing all the time, underexposing, overexposing. Well, what I'm doing here, you call bracketing. You call this bracketing. It's something that is known very much for HDR technology and most uh, for, uh, most uh, cameras have this type. So what you do is if you don't know what your exposure is, and it's very important to understand what I'm saying now, your, the exposure of the sun is very drastic. The, your normal camera can take a 16-bit image, which is a depth of about 65,000. So you can change the intensity by, from dark to light by 65,000. The sun goes somewhere between 100,000 and 1 million and more. Okay, so you don't have the complete dynamic range. So during totality, if you want to catch everything, you have to 
you have to go through all kinds of funny exercises. And that's what I did. We did bracketing. I did what you call a nine stop bracketing. So it, my camera just went brrr, and you can actually hear it in the video I'm doing this. I'm pressing the button right in the beginning and you, you can hear my camera rattle off and then rattle off again. So it goes through all the different stops. If you want to know what type of exposures I was using, um, the the exposure time is, is controlled by bracketing, but I was um, I put it on auto ISO, which is different to my friend. So my, my, my ISO was jumping somewhere between 200 and 1500, depending on, on the lighting and so on. Then once it decided it would fix the ISO and then it would just go through the bracketing somewhere between 1 20th of a second and 1 8,000th of a second everything so make the picture very dark very light and that's basically what i did so this is why it looks so strange okay and you don't need bracketing when you take the sun uh, uh you know uh, normally but it's very important in totality because so i went on and i had these these very very strange reflections uh, that I didn't know I had because it's so bright and I was controlling several instruments and you can say well Christian that was rather silly couldn't you see this yes I could have seen it if I wasn't running around so busy from one instrument to the other and doing so many things but the good news is during totality you take your filter off okay you remove you remove this filter that's on top you completely remove it and that is where uh, that's why it doesn't matter we had 20 degree temperature drop you had. Ain't that America said in, in Donnelly? Oh, here, that's how you pronounce it. Donnelly, Donnelly. I hope I got this right. Donnelly, Donnelly, Donnelly. I think I got it now. Donnelly, thank you for thank you for writing the pronunciation with that in Idaho. So you did. You had an incredible temperature drop. I was very pleased to have this temperature, <laughs> this temperature drop. So we take off this filter and then... As you can see, now it gets better. Let's go back on the screen and it gets much, much better. And it's very, very exciting as the phase is going. So I'm just going to show you what my what this looks like. Look at this picture. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is phenomenal because uh, the, 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 the moon is blocking the sun perfectly. It, it is a perfect size that fits on the moon and the sun have the same apparent diameter. And that is a wonderful coincidence. Uh, my phone my phone states we are still waiting for Zasse photo is this correct no it's not why is your phone saying that I'm sorry hmm Kirsty, I don't know uh, maybe that is my problem I'm not sh I'm not I'm not sure but I am live now um, and uh, we're not waiting for the is this correct so no we're not waiting for Zasse photo Zasse photo is live and buzzing away okay <laughs> so I don't know where, you, where that message comes from maybe I'm uh, maybe one of my settings is not correct I'll follow up on that okay so glad for everyone's coverage yes and and the amazing thing was by the way on Sunday I was live on, Can on, on Canadian TV I was on national TV for three minutes being interviewed with all the instrumentation that I had so that was very funny but let's get back to the pictures now so as you can see this is the, what you call the start of the diamond effect i'm just going to zoom in a little bit to to so these are raw images completely completely raw just zoom out a little bit and you can see the quality is beautiful look at one o'clock on top one o'clock you can see a prominence and you can see the prom the 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 uh, the really red hydrogen gas from the corona being very very um clearly visible now something you can only see with special scopes and we're going to talk about the special scope later oh i'm fine with great video and so on thank you rj so today uh, we have a, i have drastically improved my uh, I improved everything so i'm very happy for that so you can see that okay so i'm going to just zoom out again um, and jump to the next picture let me just do this quickly zoom zoom out yes there we go and you can see there I was jumping through different exposed. This is underexposed. And you can see that. Um, here it gets completely overexposed. Okay, underexposed. And as the sun disappears, this happens very, very quickly. Um, you can see that more and more becomes visible here. Look how much is visible from the corona already. You can see this is nearly like a perfect image. And the corona extends many sun, di sun diameters out. And as my image gets brighter through the bracketing, you can indeed see how fast, how far, far the corona is stretching out, millions of miles, okay? And so you go through all this, 
and uh, my camera was just rattling away. I wish I could show the corona and wedding ring I took. Oh, you did. <laughs> you did, Tina. That's why right. we were in totality for two minutes. Wonderful to hear that, Tina. Yeah, we had two minutes and 20 seconds. And, and, and um, do share it, you know, do, do post it. Uh, maybe you can post it as comments if it's possible. Here you can see how incredibly overexposed my image is. You can see it's right overexposed, but you catch you can see uh, at about seven o'clock, six to seven o'clock, how far the corona is, is stretching out, okay? So that's basically what you call bracketing. I went on and on and on doing this, uh, working like crazy. I was really building up a, an enormous sweat. Um, and I'll just jump out. So I did this and then finally what happens is, of course, uh, the, the sad moment happens just before you can see here you can see what's happening here just at 12 o'clock the sun is coming out again because the moon is just moving away okay and here you have the reverse diamond effect that's a reverse diamond effect on the other side now and it's also incredibly beautiful but within seconds it's over and it's completely overexposed this image you can basically throw away okay because it has no more value you can't see the corona anymore and um, you're back you have to put your filter back on and you you can see how fast it goes completely overexposed now and there you go that's putting the filter back on and we are back here my flex reflections again the mistakes i made but it doesn't matter um and and we're back into the in into the second half of the eclipse okay your images are wonderful thank you so much when you put that jacqueline if you put that together all you get something like this, okay? You get this incredibly extended uh, picture and I'm quickly going to show you how I did this. And hopefully uh, my software won't break down like it did yesterday, but what I've done, RJ, what I've done is something incredible. I didn't know that. There was another IT guy who said, make sure in your task manager that your uh, wirecast is on high, highest priority, real-time priority. I've done it now. So let's see if this works. And if my speech disappears, it's only because I'm going to have another piece of software run. I just want to, want to show you a very simple way of getting these images, okay? That is really the objective. So let's switch back to the other screen now. And um, I'm going to, I have opened here in the back a program, it's called Easy HDR. Now I'm not selling anything. All I did was when I got back from the eclipse, I Googled different ways. You can do this manually in Photoshop. You can superimpose it. It's very difficult if you haven't done it before. I spent a whole day and I wasn't very happy with my results. And then I tried HDR techniques. Now for people who are... Amanda, thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you. That's very kind. I'm going to... Um, to just type this in that is very kind for your support it's very much appreciated thank you so so this was super chat from amanda i appreciate that wonderful that was 20 dollars. and thank you rj too for the five dollars really appreciate it it gets me going again and and gives me my lifeline for continuing my passion with you okay so now comes now i'm going to show you this the secrets and this is secrets that people sell for lots of dollars okay and i'm going to tell you how i do this so there are two types of software you can use the the most recommended one for the pc is called easy hdr okay just as the word easy and it's really simple to use it's called easy hdr and for the mac it's called Aurora. Aurora is a fantastic program. It's supposed to be the top HDR program. And it's short, in, I think in autumn, it's also going to be released uh, for the, um, it's also going to be released for the, for, for the PC. But I found this was very good. Osprey, uh, Osprey writes, our sun stands, sun, shine state in Florida is Jack's. I see. We had rainstorm and clouds. Could not see. I'm sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's been so bad. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes Florida. You, well, you're in, you're in a quite a quite a difficult rain season now, as we as we've just heard from, as we of course know from Texas, we've gone through for incredibly difficult times here. So let me just do this for you. So what you do is you just um, what I'm doing is now I'm opening my images. So you can see I'm opening these images, and there's a little bit of warning. I can tell you I needed to learn this the hard way raw images and i prefer to shoot in raw what does it mean to shoot in raw it's completely unedited 
JPEGs are strongly edited images, as you may know. They are basically processed images, similar to Photoshop or so. It's a pre-processed, highly compressed image, and it's only 8-bit. The raw image gives you the complete information. So my preference is to use raw images. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a bug in the software. For sure there's a bug, because when I tried to do... Over, uh, when I tried to do my HDR in RAW, it looked really weird. And I got, I first thought there was something wrong in the way I did it. I tried it with JPEGs and suddenly it was fine. So it's clear there's a bug in, in Easy HDR. Now there is a workaround. There is a workaround. Thank you, Amanda. There's a workaround. And the workaround is that you build another folder with TIFF images. I know it's a bit silly. You first have to go into Lightroom or whatever. You have to export your images from RAW to TIFF, and then you can you can use 16-bit TIFF images and do exactly the same. I'm just going to do it in JPEG now, just to quickly show you how it's done, okay? So let's scroll down, and um, I'm just going to expand this window a little bit. By the way, Aurora does not have that problem I read, okay? So that's important. Um, let me just get back. Here we go, here we go. And let's try, I'm not going to try so much, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take a few images just to give you the idea of how it's done because this thing is very, very process intensive, okay? Very, very process intensive. Intensive. That means I've given Wirecast, but it may happen when I start this now that it's going to steal some, some time from Wirecast. Hopefully it will not do that uh, for the reason I've just mentioned. So let's try this, okay? I'm going to choose only three images here just to make it short. You can choose eight to nine images, no problem, okay? So I'm going to, oh, I'm not, sorry, I'm going to choose the JPEGs. It has to be JPEG, otherwise uh, it's not going to work properly, okay? So I'm just going to scroll, one second. It's a little bit difficult to do this on this big screen. Um, one second, let me go back to my image now. I just have to expand this a little bit. Uh, okay, here we go again. Okay, here are my JPEGs. Let's see. I'm going to take a very bright image. Oh, here, here it is. A very bright image. And then I'm going to take a not bright image. And we're going to do only a two-step. Uh, a two-step. These these images, I took them both in RAW and in JPEG. Uh, you know, uh, Lindy, Lindy you, you make a very good comment. What I do is I have 128 eight gigabyte cards in there and I take in them and find JPEG and RAW at the same time because it just saves me time. Why do I do that? Because sometimes when I do time-lapse photography, I use only the JPEGs. It's sufficient, okay? When I really want the high dynamic range, I use RAW. So I afford, I just go and take them in both uh, um, find JPEGs and RAW at the same time. But now I'm importing them only in JPEG for the reason that there's a software bug. For sure there is. So I'm going to open them now. And um, and now what? Ah, there we go. You know why it's going slow now? Because it has a low priority. Uh, my broadcast has a higher priority. That's why. And it should be like that. Okay? That's fine. So it says alignment, uh, automatic, and so on. It's asking you whether it wants manual or, or automatic alignment. Now, what does it alignment mean? Alignment means that put the sun on top of each other so they're exactly aligned. The software does a fairly good job, but sometimes it makes stupid mistakes, okay? It really does stupid mistakes. Yeah, Lindy, that, that's a good idea to go both in JPEG and RAW. It's my advice. Put the biggest memory card, don't save on memory cards. I put 128 gigabytes in each slot. You may think that's crazy, but I really do because I don't want to have any restrictions. It's worth spending good money on, on memory cards. It really is. Okay, so I'm just going to tell the, the software at the moment, do it yourself, if I can get down there. You know what? This is part of the problem. That I can't, uh, I can't click on there at the moment because the window is not fitting in. Oh dear! This is exactly what what I don't like. Hang on, I'm going to do a trick now. I'm going to draw this over to my other screen quickly um, and find it. One second. I've lost it now. Where is it? Where did it go? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, hang on. Uh, oh my goodness. Sorry about this. You know what sometimes is the problem? I'm going to close this again, the program quickly, and open it again. I must have buggered it up somewhere. Mm. 
this is part of the problems with sometimes with live broadcasts because it's so difficult to do things on two screens. I'm opening the program again, so just hang on. Just be patient, please. Yeah, this is this is not easy to do. Okay, because you can see what's happening. It's uh, I've got this huge screen and. Um, What did it do now? Hang on. I'm just going to say cancel for a moment and try this again. Okay, let's try again. Sorry about this. I'm going to try again. Um, the ratio is not good. Okay, I'm going to take this JPEG and I'm going to take this JPEG. I just wanted to quickly show you how this is done. Open. We're doing it now. And now I'm going to run exactly the same problem because I cannot reach the bottom of the screen to say okay. I wonder what my friend RJ would say. Christian, you need to do this, or Christian, you need to do that. Uh, I think I can just reach it now. Yes, I can. I've done it. I've done it. Okay, now it's doing the trick. Okay, but you can see what my problem is. It doesn't fit in the screen. So now it's doing its magic with just two photographs. Okay, but you can take many. Uh, what my advice would be if you have a good camera, take one f stop at the time so don't take half an f-stop one f-stop so i went uh through through a bracketing of nine so my f-stop went through minus seven minus six minus five minus four no sorry it went minus three come again it went i think it went minus four minus three minus two minus one zero one two three four that was my bracketing range okay uh, that's what it does. So it covers it covers everything from overexposed to underexposed that's what i meant with nine uh uh, so, so with one, uh, one, one stop at a time. Okay. So it's, I'm just taking two now just to show you. And it's taking a bit of time because, um, my, my computer is saying, Hey, Wirecast has priority at the moment. Okay. So just give it a little bit of peace. And hopefully this will work. <laughs> if not, then, uh, it also has a good reason because it, it'll show you what can go wrong. Okay. Yes, you did the same thing on Periscope. That's right. You get what you pay for. <laughs> I did the same. Hey, Jackie, I did the same. Yes, I did. Oh, don't worry. I'm doing it again now. And hopefully it comes a little bit better than on Periscope. Because on Periscope, uh, doing things live is very difficult because the bandwidth is much, much smaller. Okay. So I'm hoping that this time it'll work correctly. So it's nearly there. Okay, here it is. Here it is. It, it, it actually did work. It did work. It did work. Very nice. Okay, so good. Let's 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 just wait a second. Here it is. Here it is. I'm go so what you have on the right hand side, and you can see you have different sliders, you have compression. I'm going to increase the compression. It's going very slow because um, it's saying, hey, Wirecast has but there you go. See, you can expand it nicely. It's done a beautiful job. At the moment now it's a little bit too bright and you can you can adjust the gamma here make the gap put pull down the gamma gamma just basically means the linearization or the 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 um the way the image is affected okay and i can then click on local contrast and then you can go on you can you can adjust the strength and so on and so on and so on okay so that's the way to do it. And, the, and you can see that it's coming up beautiful. Now you can say, well, I don't like the way uh, the background looks. Well, that's no worry. The background can easily be dealt with because if I can scroll down here, um, you, can, you can adjust the blackness here. Okay, you see this, the blackness? You can adjust all these parameters. Okay, so everything can be nicely done. And I think uh, I, I, I hope I was able to convince you that this software does a great job. Uh, if you use it correctly, like I do, and you get a little bit of practice, then finally, what you end up with is is this beautiful image. Okay, so if you if you superimpose eight images, you will come. You will finally come up with this image, and that's all I used. I just used Easy HDR, and the same works with Aurora because my friend Matt used Aurora, and he got exactly the same uh, same. Uh, results. You can see also at five o'clock how beautiful the, the rays of the sun are coming out. And then, of course, you get the diagonal. Now, some of you say, well, I've seen much, much more beautiful eclipses than this. Why is the aurora so smooth? 
So the aurora, sorry, the corona so smooth. The reason is because the sunspot activity was very low. It was very low. Maybe in 18 months, the sunspot activity is going to be a lot higher. And then you see this very dramatic corona, which uh, we didn't see in, during, this, um, uh, during this event because the uh, solar activity was just very low. That's the reason, okay? But you do end, with the, end up with these beautiful images, okay? That's another one. Uh, here, that was no HDR. That was just a single image that I used, okay? Beautiful, just as the, di the, di the diamond ring was affected. And then you can do some enlargements too, if you like. And I showed just our little tiny Earth in comparison to these incredibly large prominences that you see in the, um, you know, coming up from the photosphere of the sun, okay? It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, I did do a few other experiments. So that's what you do with a normal camera. A normal camera is fantastic for, for solar eclipses. What I did try was my other equipment just for fun because I had no experience. I bought this second hand and I thought, well, let's see what the solar, what does a um, solar scope looks like, look like. So during the eclipse, you can see that was maybe 40% eclipsed there, 30, 40% eclipsed. And you can see how the moon is eating away at the sun. And you can see something that you do not see with the, um, you know, with, with, uh, uh, a normal camera, you can see the prominence um, right on top. You should be able to see it. I hope you can see this, if, if the enlargement's coming in correctly. But let me just pull it down a little bit. I hope you can see this correctly on the screen now. Um, I hope this is coming, coming across correctly. One second. I'm just going to see if I can move the image a little bit. Yes, no, no, yeah, yeah, well, a little bit down. Yes, this should be better. This should be better because you may not be able to see that. But what I wanted to show you, the prominences that you can usually only see when, when you have a complete total eclipse is something that with a solar scope, I do see it. And by the way, I've done incredible progress with my solar scope and I, I'm going to show you some live uh, views in the next days if, if, if you're interested in this. I will show, do some live scopes showing the sun as it is now, and I will show you how I get these images live. I think that's going to be exciting. I've never seen this being done um, like this on YouTube, okay? Yes, the, yes, uh, the, it's, it's absolutely visible. What you also see is the sunspots, by the way, okay? Now, what are sunspots? I'm just going to expand this a little bit uh, just to show you what are sunspots. These are sunspots. One second. These here... Are sunspots. Sunspots are dark. Uh, these these appeared. These three sunspots appeared during the uh, eclipse. You see them on normal images too, and I'll show them to you. But you will not see them in the detail that you can see them in the solar scope because what you see is the plasma of the surface of the sun, how it's being influenced by the incredible strong magnetic field. The local magnetic field is very strong there. Okay. You've never seen anything like that. Well, that's good. I can show you something. Now I'm going to show you something that you probably haven't even seen anyway. This you would have probably seen if you looked a little bit on Twitter and so on. Someone would have done something similar to this. But I have not seen anybody do this. What I had now is I had a pinhole camera. You, you, you heard about the classical pinhole camera. A pinhole camera during an eclipse. Now, <laughs> the chair looks upside down. Don't worry about it. The image, the, the image orientates uh, um, automatically and obviously um, it didn't know how to orientate it. But you can see through the sieve here, you can see what it looks like. Um, if you look closer, you can see those are all crescent, uh, crescent images. So somebody had this beautiful sieve there and you can see these are like little pinhole cameras. Now I had a much finer pinhole camera that was, I think it was 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 millimeters. And I, I, I did an exposure through that, through my Nikon camera. I put it on my Nikon camera and I just wanted to see what it looks like. And I was absolutely amazed because what, what it results in is this pattern here. You can look, if you look at the center of the pattern there, you can see this is what we call diffraction. It looks similar to when you throw a stone into the, in a, to a pond. You get these light and dark features. We call those interferences. And um, those of you who've done a little bit of 
or maybe remember what you've done in school, this is the type of things you would have done in school also with light. I hope you would have. Or in university, maybe you would have seen this. These light and dark structures proves that uh, that light indeed is a, wa is a, is a wave, or has, has wave, not is a wave, but behaves like a wave. It has wave-like natures. Now, what you do see is in the center, it, doesn't, it looks like a heart. It doesn't look like the sun. And that's because it was eclipsed. So what I did here, I superimposed eight images to get everything. I, I superimpose the dark part, similar in HDR, um, so that I get the complete spectrum. And you can see the beautiful uh, structure of the sun, the beautiful diffraction. You can see the multiple colors there. That's caused by interference. And that is all because it's a pinhole. The pinhole acts like a camera and does everything a lens usually does. Isn't it, isn't it nice? It looks interdimensional. Yes, it does. It looks psychedelic, doesn't it? It looks a little bit sort of from the 60s. <laughs> Crazy, doesn't it? But that image, I, uh, I must say, I have not seen this again on Twitter or anybody. I seem to be maybe the one of the only ones, if not the only person who's done that experience during the eclipse. And uh, during 2024, the eclipse, uh, which I'm planning now, if anybody wants to join me, by the way, on 2024, I will probably be a tour guide then. And you can join me for the 2024 eclipse, maybe somewhere in Texas or somewhere where I locate it. You can come along uh, I'll be doing a, you know, a, a proper tour. I'll show you how to do your settings and everything. And hopefully we'll have a good experience. So I'm already announcing a tour in 2024. <laughs> you think Chris is crazy? Well, that's the way I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear the Steppenwolf? Yes, I can. Oh, that's a good one. I, you know, the Steppenwolf, it's a beautiful... Um, the Steppenwolf is a beautiful novel by Stefan Zweig. Okay, I read it in German. Okay, sorry, I quickly have to tell you. But um, it's, it's a beautiful story about a person who is um, a complete loner. And it's beautifully described how he feels in society like a complete outcast, like a Steppenwolf. He's always on his own. And my goodness, uh, it's a beautiful novel. It's a German author called Stefan Zweig. Uh, or he may be Swiss. I'm not sure. I think he's a Swiss author, but but fine. He, he writes in German anyway. But he's got this incredible gift of of writing. So do read the Steppenwolf. Uh, if you can read it in German, read it in German. Read it in English. It's it's absolutely marvelous. Okay. So I just I just had to say that. That's absolutely fantastic. I'd love to have that image in my living room. Well, that's fine. You know, Amanda. What I will do is. I'm going to uh, probably in, in one or two weeks time, I will do a special scope because I need to raise some money and I will do a type of auction and I'll take my best image. Of course, the hawk's going to be there, right? The hawk's going to be part of it. How could I do an auction without the hawk? But I will, what I, what I want to do is, is I want to frame these images too and send them framed, properly framed, okay? Because I know some of you were a little bit upset I've heard that and I apologize uh, for that. I said, well, when we did the Hancock thing, uh, you know, we, we did an auction and it didn't arrive in a frame. I understand it. It's my fault. It's my fault. I take responsibility for it because it was a spontaneous decision and we didn't know how to ship these things properly. Now I know how to do it. So what I want to do is do an auction then or, or some type of fundraising for myself so that you can you know, do you help support that? And I'll look through beautiful eagle images, beautiful hawk images, and I will show, you know, you can choose the frame and everything. I'll, I'll give you some choices for that. And then it'll be shipped to you and the shipping will be included and so on. Okay. So we won't make such, such mistakes again. Again, I apologize for that. Hi, Iadora. I didn't know you could say anything here before. Of course you can. You're very welcome to comment. <laughs> Iadora is very nice. She sends me very nice emails. I thank you for that. Very nice. Okay. The, flaw, the hawk flew to Texas. I heard that. Yes. Okay. So that's a little bit of a pre-announcement. I'm, I'm, I'm doing on that. And, uh, okay, I'm, I'm inviting you to come to, oh my goodness, and, and be the tour guide. I would love to, Amanda. You know, that's something that I will seriously consider because uh, I think uh, the total eclipse is going through Dallas. I have to check all that, okay? I know it's very early, but it's never too early to plan. I will definitely do some, some uh, tour guides, some eclipse guides in future, simply because um, I'm so thrilled about that. So I might do one on the Pacific or so in 18 months when the next or uh, in a year's time when the next eclipse is due. 
I, I think there's none in 2018, but in 2019, I might do some tours. So if, if any of you want to join me, I will, I will properly issue that because it's, it's an incredible experience. It's something everybody has to have. And the 2024 is going to be North America. If you have that patience to stay to 2024, that's fine. I, if I'm around by then, and I hope I will, uh, you know, <laughs> I hope I will uh, touch wood. That's all I can say, touch wood. If I'm around then, uh, I will definitely uh, organize a tour, okay? I got my items in a timely manner. That's good. Well, that's fine. Anyway, so I hope you had some understandings. We were very thrilled about the, the, the whole Hancock uh, Wildlife Foundation uh, fundraising, but it wasn't perfect, okay? And I take responsibility for that, okay? So I understand that, okay? It was too spontaneous and it'll be better then, okay? I would love meeting you in 2024 if I can find someone to push me around. Oh, RJ, my goodness. You will find a way, okay? We'll find a way. We'll be. We'll stay in contact, okay? Um, we'll find a way. I'm sure we can, okay? Yes, so... I, um, that was a little bit of an excursion to the beautiful uh, Glenrock. Uh, again, we, we, we had a great time. Uh, it was an experience of a lifetime. These two minutes and 20 seconds that we had were the greatest experience. I can tell you there's a Mr. Eclipse, and he is one of the most knowledgeable people, if not the most knowledgeable person on Eclipse. I read him. He's called Mr. Eclipse. Google him absolutely adorable person uh, the, the, and generous the way he writes uh, he had 16 cameras set up 16 cameras can you believe it 16 cameras and he was 30 miles away from us in casper and he was unlucky he had cl high clouds come in and it's just a matter of luck we didn't have that high clouds came in a few minutes afterwards but it's pure luck okay so he had his beautiful 16 cameras I adore his writing. I'm I'm marveling that you are planning that for 20. I figured it's just seven more years. Didn't know if I'd, I'd still be alive then. Well, I adore. Let's be positive and, and you will be alive. Okay, let's always be positive about things. Okay, but I do plan ahead. <laughs> I do. Yes. <laughs> None of us know. Jackie's writing the right things. None of us know. Okay, we don't know. Okay, we don't know. Uh, we, we really don't. Okay, but let's let's hope for the best. Okay. So, I wanted to finally show you what is the best thing that you can get in a total eclipse or doing that. I mean, I have an apps. If you ever want to do me a favor, I love ice cream, okay? I love ice cream. It's wonderful. There's nothing better. That was the most... I just loved it. You know, they had this beautiful stand and they sold ice cream. Oh my goodness, does that taste good? Okay, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> okay, on that note, <laughs> on the ice cream note, if you have any more comments, um, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I will give the next, I'll be uh, planning my next live broadcast very soon. I'll announce what I'm all up to, okay? And I will do an auction too to raise some money, right? And you know, I had less than 10 cameras, yes. You can be Mr. Eclipse Jr. I can, I can. The people in, in, in Western Kentucky were in the X area. Ah, they had the, the last eclipse. Yes, you are right. And I do know a place in Kentucky that has the X area. That is what he's talking about. What he's, what he's talking about is there is a very small area in Kentucky that has the uh, that, that had the 2017 eclipse and will also have the 2024 eclipse, which is going 20, uh, north south. And that is the X area. Maybe not. Is that a brownie? Yes, it is. How did you recognize that it's a brown? Oh, I just love it. And I'm going, you know what? After this broadcast, I'm going to have ice cream because I have my beautiful equipment set up. I've got my solar scope outside, it's working well. And I can't wait to show you the sun live. Okay. So I'm going to do all these great things. Um, I'm going to have to have an ice cream outside and I'm going to set up my solar scope. It's tracking beautifully. I've in improved my setup ever since I came up, uh, came back from, from, um, uh, uh, from uh, uh, the eclipse from Wyoming. And I think now it's possible to show it live, which I couldn't do before, because now I have the ability to really move across the sun in, in, in real time, which I couldn't do before. It was too shaky. Uh, all that is solved now, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to share that with you, okay? So that's going to be one of my next 
next ones. We'll talk about wildlife. We'll talk about eagles. Eagles are quiet at the moment. End of September, the eagle season starts again, and I'll be fully blasting away then, and I'll do an auction in between, okay? I adore right, the kind of ice cream junkie you are. Well, there you go. Ask about spiritual ice cream shop. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> oh, dear. We have a very good Italian, right? I'm, you're all pumped up. I know. I'm terrible, isn't it? It's the, it's, it's the way I am. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. And um, I'll just write thank you in big, big letters here because probably my message is going to be much faster than, um, uh, you know, than the delay we have here. You enjoy your ice cream, I will. And thank, thank you so much for joining. And do please stay with me. Stay with me. Be patient. I will be doing... A lot of hopefully interesting broadcasts for you. Yes, ice cream after a hard day's work. Isn't it? Isn't that so? Okay. Well, on that note, um, I'm going to... Yes, let's see if I can I can bring up the screen here. Bring everything. Yes, I can. So I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me. I really enjoyed it. I'm uh, I'm, I'm back with full speed. I will be in San Francisco. I'll be, by the way, I'll be in San Francisco next weekend for a few days with, with, with a friend of mine. If I can, I'll broadcast something from, um, from, from San Francisco too. I probably can do it. Okay. And um, yeah, see you soon. And I'll announce the auction as soon as I have have a proper idea of how to do it in a way that hopefully you won't be disappointed that's really important to me i don't want to i don't i want you i want to meet the expectations that you have okay so thank you very much